Okay, welcome back to the scale form HUD tutorials. I'm sorry I had to end the last video abruptly, I just noticed that my timer had hit the YouTube video limit. So I will probably have to shrink some of the stuff down, so if you saw any blips that's why they were there. So in this one I'm going to try and be a little bit quicker. Uh, so last video we got our stgameinfo.uc file set up. The next thing we're going to do is we set player controller class to be something different to the default. So we need to create an, uh, the file st player controller. So solution explorer, go back up to our scale form tutorial classes, uh, and we're going to add a new file, new item, and real script file st player controller. Add. And this one, class st player controller extends ut player controller. And then I'm sure there was a reason I subclassed this. Uh, ooh, lots of stuff. Yes, there was a reason I did this. Um, you probably don't need to do this, but um, if you in the default properties block, this is the only reason you really subclass player controller. It we want to set B, and I forgot what it's called now. There we go. B force behind view to be false. Sorry about that, I was being talked at. Anyway, B force behind view equals false. False, not flags, I've done it again. Uh, and then save that file. Uh, and then there's the default, uh, the name. So name equals quotation marks default underscore underscore st player controller close quotation marks and save it out. So now we've got our game info and player controller files set up. Uh, next, what we need to do is we've set HUD type to scaleform tutorial dot st HUD, but we haven't got an st HUD file yet. So let's create one. So same process we've been using before in the classes folder under scaleform tutorial. Add new item, Unreal script file, st HUD. Add. And S, now this is the point where I'm going to have to go back to my uh, the one that I created before to make the whole thing work in the intro video. And I'm sorry, but I just can't remember things off the top of my head. So, uh, here we go. Extends, class ST HUD extends UT HUD base. And then in, uh, right. Next thing we need to do is create a variable that will hold the actual movie player that the SWF file will get loaded into. So we're going to type it in now. If you're using Visual Studio, it won't actually come up in your IntelliSense prompt thing because we haven't actually made it yet. But we're going to call this one um, STGFX HUD. And we're going to call this one HUD Movie. And anybody that knows me will know I hate the word movie, but eh, it's what they use. It's the naming convention they use. So, uh, right. Next thing is singular event destroyed. And uh, you know what, I'm just going to copy this over. If you can't read it on the video, I'll probably post it in the, um, uh, the sort of thing to the bottom or wherever it gets put when YouTube updates themselves, the description, video description. Uh, so copy that over. And basically we have singular event destroyed, which gets rid of the whatever instance of HUD movie we've got. Uh, simulated function post begin play uh, which obviously you know what that does it just in, uh, creates all of these files 
And I'm going to have to change all of these because I copied over them something else. Bear with me. And then finally we have the post render event. Uh, this one gets called every um, game tick that the HUD needs to be updated. So all we've done there is just said HUD movie tick HUD, which is a function we're going to create in the next video. Now I know we've got about five minutes left on this video. I'm going to end it here, and because the other class is fairly complicated, so we're going to create that one in the next video. See you then.